what really the way this shit works is it's first to mind, not first in reality. This person has the Migos flow, right? Mm -hmm. You remember when the Migos flow popped off and then there are all these old heads that were like, well, this person had that flow and this person had that flow, right? got it from The youth don't care. Yeah. Right? Because it was first in their head. Yeah. Right? It might be nice from a historical standpoint to say, oh, well, I can see where it originated. Like, even if you're somebody who's like more respectful, like, okay, I, I see it originated back there, but it doesn't hit the same. Yeah. When I hear from this person, then I do from the older person or just the originator because I got it from that new person's delivery first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so first to mind is far more important than actually being first. Kanye wasn't the first person to have a floating stage, but most people's experience, at least over here, right? In America was Kanye with a floating stage. Yeah. And oh my gosh, he's so genius. He's so visionary. And guess what? When you find out there's a guy over in Africa that did a floating stage, it doesn't, deduct Kanye's genius points in people's mind enough (laughs) to actually matter because I knew about his first. And for some reason, there's the cognitive dissonance that just still lasts. And I think a lot of people even understand that, especially Mm -hmm. some of these people on the pop scale. They're like, all right, cool. That might, I might lose five culture points when they find out the truth, but shit, I gained 20 from it. So what yeah, is yeah, <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. The new people coming there from the look of outpacing the, the people that remembering that this was something else right. first or coming right. from it. Yeah. And overall, they didn't get so deep into that person's fan base that did it originally that like to actually truly care long term. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's the way that marketing work works, right? It's not just the reality of ownership. So the, like ownership are two things actually. So you can legally copyright something, but if everybody knows me for this, right? I have a level of ownership in the people's minds. Yeah. So Jacor, you wrote this song. Well, shoot, this is the reality, right? There might be a songwriter who writes a song and for whatever reason they they own it. But I sing that shit. Everybody sees my face and knows me. It's my song in their head, though. Yeah. Like, I get that technically Ja'Cory wrote it, but this is Sean's song, man. Like, I don't even care that you can sing better than him. Like, Pharrell says uh, CeeLo has a, his version of Happy is better mm-hmm. than his, right? Pharrell says that. It's like, hey, bro. Shit wouldn't have hit the same. Hey, it wouldn't hit the same. <laughs> it might have hit. <laughs> If I heard his first, but it's too late. Yeah. Yours is already in my mind. That's yeah. just just that's just the way it go. Right? That was part of prostitute. <laughs> Remember when Jacquees had the uh the Buddha remix? Yeah, the element shit. Hey, yeah. they're like, we gotta stump this shit out. It's <laughs> like Jacquees, you did that shit too soon, man. Like it, you getting traction and it's hitting some people first before <laughs> Ellis does everything that it needs to do. Well, because of the show, like, sing, sing that Jacquees version. You mean the version of my shit? <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So it's one thing if you waited like a year or this thing had already hit his main accolades. Now it's giving the song an extra lift that's truly a tribute to the song. But it's the wrong. It's a distraction at that phase. So I understand, you know, why they stumped that out. But um, but man, man that version was hard, bro. I was one of the people that had that shit on my computer as a like I had had no um. Like playlists, no other tracks. Every once in a while, do I just go to that one file and bump that shit like five <laughs> times? Like this shit. <laughs> but that, that remix is what taught me that I don't think radio would be clearing shit because I remember that shit used to play on the radio all the time here. Yes, that's like there's no like how is this remix like playing on the radio? Like is that, I'm like yes. either the DJs don't give a fuck and they just like yo we are gonna break all codes and regulations or there's something in that shit that I don't know about that lets them do it. See, but that was a song that made me think. There's about a <laughs> there's a. Because I want to get back to the first stuff and really break that down. But there's a remix or an alternate version of, um, dang, I wish I knew you wanted me. What's the actual official name? The Steve Lacey joint? Yeah, Yeah. I forgot the actual official name. Right? That shit goes hard, dog. And I was like, dang, they remix it or whatever. I cannot find it on the internet. (laughs) I cannot find it. It has like extra bass to it and everything. <laughs> and they play it so much. And it seems so regular. For a second, I actually started to doubt. I'm like, did this shit always have this bass in it? And I forgot. I had to go back to the regular songs. I, like, I knew this didn't have bass in it like this. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's perfect. I found up sped up versions, but it's more like the hyper pop sped up. Yeah. It's not that. It's, it's a high, like a, you know, faster pace. And there's just this bass drop in the back. That's all. That's it. There's yeah. no feature, nothing. 
Bro, it goes so hard though. It goes so hard. Might be hard. some TikTok shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, may, I I haven't checked TikTok. I've looked at like uh Spotify and, and YouTube, but that small switch, yeah. yo, yeah. It, it goes. Hard. I don't I don't know how to find stuff when the, when it plays on the radio though. Um, now with that being said, imagine if I heard that first, right? And then I was like, dang, this shit's slow. That shit's not weird. It's like, oh, perfect example. We can go back to some first. The artist that we worked with, and remember when she dropped the that teaser, right? I remember we were in Florida. You played that shit. And I was like, what's that? Like, she dropped this shit. Is this a song song? And you're like, nah, it's just a little teaser thing she did. But everybody loves this song yeah. or this teaser. And they're like, can we drop a full song? Make it a full song. She ain't really want to make it full oh, song. Okay, okay, nice and then she that. drops. Yeah. A full version, yeah. and I'm like, oh shoot, she dropped the full version. I'm with, I'm just straight fan <laughs> mode. I'm not even thinking client because you working with her more. <laughs> and I go listen to it, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> why, what, what, what's the beat? Why is it so different? The the production's different. It's like, what was it sped up or something? I feel yeah, like it was, it was sped a faster up. beat. Yeah, yeah it, was it wasn't faster. a somber. Yeah. yeah, I was like, you took all the emotion away from this <laughs> shit, man. Me hearing that one version first, maybe the second one, maybe the second version, I would have liked it if I didn't hear that first version. Yeah. But boy, did the rest of the fans agree with me. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how could you do that? And what did you say she said? Like, why she redid it? It was something with the the instrumental. Like, the one that she used the rights to it, it got and bought. You know, like, RSMEs. Oh, movies. I didn't know that yeah. part. It was okay. Like, she got beat to it, so she had to go get a producer that she know to completely remake it for her. And then by the time that happened, you know, it was late, fired uh, down a little bit. And then the song was different. See, I thought she said she just didn't, I thought she just didn't like the the pace of it and wanted it to be sped up or something like that. Yeah, I think that's what made her go with the, the sped up version. But that's why she didn't use the, the original oh. instrumental. The original instrumental was, yeah, I think, because she, she couldn't okay. get it. But the pace thing. I forgive thing, her yeah. more. Yeah. I forgive her more. Yeah. Now, now that I know that, <laughs> like, that, I thought it was just like, ah, I don't like this. I see people want it. But I don't like this. Well, that version. was part of it. That was that wasn't all of it. That was maybe twenty percent of what. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Okay. And I think not getting the first beat in her head was like, oh, that's a song. That's, that's a I sign. Think, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, then this shit sold out. <laughs> so, yeah, I man, I should switch it up and go this direction. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, man. <sighs> man. And then, you know, we that all, one, that you, suck. you live and you learn. Hopefully. Man. I was so ready to play that shit a lot. It's so much more upbeat. I mean, it's grown on me over the years. Like, I was to it the other day. Man, come up on my, my I'm going to give it a try. Yeah. Maybe with separation. You yeah, know what I mean? There's no time in between now. Because <laughs> I vaguely remember it only because I was looking at the post not too long ago. So, the post reminds me of what it sounded like. But by this point, I almost forgot what it sounded like. So, I'm I'm, I'm almost at the, the point where it's completely flushed out of my system. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, well, artists, look. If fan acts or something... <laughs> <laughs> don't give them that except <laughs> whatever adjustment you think you should change or if you are like looking back on it i think if we could have done that differently or if i could have advised her differently i'd have been like do both like do like an og version of it and then maybe drop like this second version of it and call it the something else mix or something right so you can just get that out your system like give the fans what they want just so they can have it and they can champion it and then give them what you want right behind it, you know? Yeah. Could have made a nice little two-piece out of it. Yeah. No, what I, I know that. that. I didn't think about that. I can then. see that. And then yeah. maybe even give it a little narrative of yeah. why she did. Yeah, this yeah. version is more somber and speaks to X, Y, Z. And this version is more upbeat because it's me finding myself and walking towards the lane. Man, we could have spun <laughs> that shit, bro. That shit could have been beautiful. Hey, you, you went better than I was going to go. I was going for the, <laughs> hey, bro, I couldn't get the official beat. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I got to do this other one. Going with the truth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is a good narrative sometimes, bro. Yeah, but I feel like fans don't believe that as nah. much as you know. The truth sometimes sounds like a lie because we hear it oh, as yeah. a lie from so many other artists. That it- all right, that is true. Yeah, that is, so I'd rather go with the creative lie because at least they don't. They don't. The line is blurred. They, they don't even yeah. know what to think. That's that's true. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that would have helped there if you just you wouldn't have been able to put it on a regular platform is like I just can't put it there. But y'all can listen on YouTube or whatever. But yeah, so look, that's the impact of the first stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's so important to realize again, it's like first doesn't matter by itself. Mm-hmm. I got to make an awareness of the fact that this first happened. All right. That's why you'll see a lot of products that are far better marketed do better than a higher quality product. Right. It's like, yeah, people are like, oh, this is so much better. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows about it. Yeah. Period. <laughs> the other the tree falling in the forest. <laughs> hey, who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who cares? Who knows? Except for whoever the tree fell on when it hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you one of those people <laughs> screaming. But. So people have to be aware. And then, especially with something like the pyramid situation and things like that, right? You have to create awareness of the of the meaning of it as well. Mm-hmm. So now I know about it. Why is it important? Oh, Russ performed at the pyramids. Oh, but it's important, even more important, not just dope. Because that right, that right there is dope, period, yeah. right? But it's even more important because I'm the first solo rapper, apparently, right? And by the way, um, if y'all are listening, y'all past pod listeners, what was that number four clip listeners? Let me I'm gonna pull something up on on uh Google real quick. I want y'all to see something. Artist who performed <laughs> at Pyramid. Look at this. Y'all talked about that one group. Y'all talking about me. Y'all didn't mention Louis Armstrong. <laughs> you know, y'all didn't mention Frank Sinatra. So y'all were acting like y'all were going for the first. Like y'all leaving some shit out too. But know what? You were not aware. <laughs> you did not care. <laughs> you were not aware, so you did not care. <laughs> That's the way this shit goes. So y'all didn't have to come at me like that, man. That's all I'm saying. Like it, it all y'all did was prove the point. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why, look, that's why we come at the kids so hard when you think of um, like society when it comes to marketing and products. Yeah. Let's get them so we can get in their minds first because they're still experiencing first. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that this old music might be, it might be, I'm not even like objectively saying, I'm just saying like it might be better than this new music. But if they hear that new music first and that new style first, that's going to change their perspective of that old. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all that type of stuff. I mean, we 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 literally build society, <laughs> yeah. basically from a marketing standpoint, yeah. off of the youth for that reason. That's always the big money opportunity. That's why there's always articles like, "Oh, the way millennials think, the way Gen Z thinks," because it's a new opportunity. Yeah, and it may, I mean, it makes sense when you look at it that way, right? Because like, how many people are gonna do the research to find out if you're telling the truth or not? You know, it's not. Like we don't condone lying, right? Like I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. but I get it sometimes, you know, in in, in the world of entertainment. Sometimes you, <laughs> there's a clear cut narrative that you know that by the time people start to figure out that this isn't 100 percent true, I'm already, I've already won. I'm already, I've already cashed out, mm-hmm. got what I want. This is one of those things, right? Like, like I said, like how many people scroll past that rush was like, oh, that's cool, and didn't even think to go look into it. My first thought wasn't to go verify, or not right, which is a, we, we fall for the trick sometimes. You know, it's the, it's the beauty of it. You know, mm-hmm. you know the bullet coming, but you don't step out the way for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> this this one's too enjoyable. Yeah, it's like, let me see what happens here. You know what, <laughs> what I mean? You know what I mean, I won't be taking all the way out, but yeah, like, I think that's the biggest lesson, bro. Is like, it doesn't matter who did it first; it matters about who talks about it first. You know what I'm saying? Who or talks who about talks it about it the loudest and convinces mm-hmm. people that were first. Because, you know, yep. like I said, by the time people start looking into the truth and Especially with the way the internet works, but a motherfucker could tweet some shit. That should be trending and viral yep. by the end of the day. And then by the time somebody comes out, how many times have we seen things go viral and narratives be spun into these crazy moments? That like the truth comes out a day or two later, and like the truth doesn't go anywhere near as big as whatever the initial narrative was, right? Yeah. So even like this, bro, like there probably is somebody who posted it to that Russ clip, like, no, nah, Russ, you weren't the first. This guy was first. And that shit didn't go nowhere. Cause nobody, yep. <laughs> no, it's like, I, I already. Put my capacity about caring into caring that he did it. <laughs> I don't have the room to go care about this new random person that maybe did it, you know what I'm saying, 20, 30, however long, I don't right. know how long it was, but however long ago, right? Like you said, like people are looking for 
the first in their time. It's just like history, bro. Like we're not. Mm-hmm. It's cool to learn that people did all these things back then. But you're like, man, but well, this shit ain't got no effect on me. Like I'm yeah. not seeing this shit right now. The motherfucker that's showing me them doing the same thing on YouTube right now or something has more impact than the people I learned about doing yep. in the past because I can experience it and see it in real time. And, I, and that's what we always take it back to. That I think are something about, bro. Like from a consumer standpoint, uh, we just care about who we heard about doing it first. And if mm-hmm. we happen to know that that person wasn't first, then we care. You know what I'm saying? We talk about it, right? If we don't know, then we we probably, most of us probably just take the narrative and run with it. You know, sad truth is how people yeah. are. And then even the ones that do know, they're still contributing to the conversation, uh, to that conversation. Remember, hey, he wasn't actually first. This guy was first. But you're still talking about it. So yeah. even in that situation, you still win. Because then the narrative changed. If enough people find out, the narrative switches to, oh, Russ was not actually the first artists to perform in the pyramids here are five other artists that actually were first but you just extend the conversation by another week you know what i'm saying another week or two so hey exactly crazy, bro exactly crazy. that's the <laughs> old person's dilemma right <laughs> as we all get older how many times have we all heard somebody older say well no first you hear somebody younger say oh that's so unique mm-hmm. this artist is so dope they're doing this and that and then the old person like Man, oh X, Y, and Z been did that. They yeah. been did that. And you're like, I hear you, but does it really connect mm-hmm. like the true fact that they aren't as unique? No. <laughs> like they're unique in your time, and it's hard to unsee them as that. Why? Because I can't unexperience my experience. Mm-hmm. So it was first to me. It's too late. <laughs> they, if the cherry gets popped, you can't unpop the cherry. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way, bro. It's like, well, so what you want me to do? Not feel as amazing as I felt? Because that amazing <laughs> feeling is now always going to be associated with that yeah. artist, yeah. not these other people. I can build some appreciation for those people who are already have done it. And I could truly love and like a lot of the things I'm hearing from them, especially as I experienced first with those older catalogs. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of old ar- ar- artists that, you know, their catalogs are amazing to me. But still growing up, you, know, you hear one thing first. It's like, dang, like, this is it for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is it for me. I hear what you're saying, Pop, but this this is it for me. Um, but but yeah, man, that 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 the being first is I think and, and that's what I love about a Margaret conversation and kind of like how we think. Cause a lot of times I, I I like to say the way consumers care about stuff. And we'll see y'all in the comments a lot of times. It's completely different than how we say stuff. Mm-hmm. All right? We will literally be talking about something and saying something like a first doesn't matter or this is first and that. And then they'll think we're hating. It's like the Travis Bot Scott uh Travis Scott bot situation. Yeah. Like us talking about Travis having bots, they think it's hating and all these other things. But like for us, the game. yeah, that's part of the game for us. We're yeah. not even thinking. Like this is like, oh yeah, no, nah, man. Well, he should have did it that way. Like in that conversation, you were basically like, man, hey. Y'all need to try to find some people who can do this, right? Yeah, in in a way that matters, right? And we talked about the music, so that's a big deal, all that stuff. But it's like when you, if you want to be in the game, actually in the game, you don't have the luxury of viewing the game with that same level of romanticism that fans think. Mm-hmm. That's why everything's like hating or love. It's like hate or love. For us, it's like, bro, it's so much gray space. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, bro, I'm with it, man. I think that's a that's a, a very important distinction to to make is that you know there are a lot of marketers on the on the internet who are like that, right? They're very like, you know, we only do the positive things, and you know, no, nah, this is wrong, this is bad. Artists, the artist game should be pure, and everybody should get an equal chance starting at the same point on the starting line. And yeah, yeah, I'm saying we all get the same power boost and all that shit. But I feel like we're one of the few marketers that i mean we don't encourage it but we acknowledge it right like it's like like i've worked with clients before and seen impact of bot setups on their back end right we've had clients before we look we get access to their back end shit we're like oh this shit ain't nothing like we thought it was mm-hmm. on the front end like i don't hate it you know what i'm saying like I've, I've we've done enough to understand that like any game there are there are things that you won't understand how to play well within it until you're at the level where it matters yeah, exactly you know what i'm saying <laughs> like so when you're down here looking up and you wondering why all the, the, the motherfuckers at the court got on this special pair of shoes? Why they all wear the same pair of shoes? And you get to that level, you're like, oh, I get it now. This shit gives me better art support. I can jump a little bit higher. Because of <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It clicks for you when you get to that point. Yeah. And so I think a lot of artists are like jump or quick to jump and call certain things like bad 
And at your level, it might be bad because you, you're not at a point to where you can take advantage of certain things yet. But you might get here. You might rise three, four, five, five levels and start looking at that shit differently. Now, you know what I'm saying? And so that's how I look at a lot of the marketing stuff. All of it, I don't condone. You know what I'm saying? All of it, I wouldn't recommend to a client or a particular client. Right. But I respect that. When I see a game play well, you know what I'm saying? No matter how, how fair or unfair that game was played, bro, like, yeah. I, I respect it, bro. The marketing me is like, damn. Like, the, the fan of me might be like, damn, it's fucked up. But the market in me is like, nah, that shit was kind of hard. I can't lie. You know, like, hey, look, man. <laughs> it, to me, especially something like bots. Yeah, me, bots or whatever at this point. That's like, to me, it's irrelevant, right? If you if it works to get you where you need to go. We're talking about bots. We're not talking about, I don't know, something serious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, oh, yeah, he got an extra few fake numbers. And now he's a big artist. Like, who did that hurt? That's like, that's the way I think of it. Yeah. Like, what what mattered did it to me? If anything, especially if it's a social proof thing, I always blame that stuff on the fans. Like to me, it's stupid. Like even this whole industry plant thing, that idea of that, 